to uh, turn in your history, you cannot um, you cannot do any counseling until you have a uh, your own history, uh, so that you can trade uh, counseling sessions back and forth with another student. And we're going to start in about three weeks, so you need to get those done. You need to get those in. Let's go ahead and uh, get started on this lecture. We're going to tackle chapter 12 and 13. Next week we tackle chapter 14, and then the following week we tackle chapter 15, and we will start. We will start uh, counseling. So let's get going. There we go. Identifying key problems or challenges. Understanding the client's problems. This can be complicated. The process of coming to an agreement on problems and goals involves a thoughtful and complete assessment. And the, you, sometimes the problem, you can see the problem and the client is in denial and the client doesn't want to deal with that. Um, the only thing you can do is to try to get them to uh, recognize that this is a, a problem that needs to be dealt with. If they don't, then you can't deal with it. You can only deal with something that they want to deal with. It is important to work on what the client is ready to solve, not what the practitioner might think is important. So the client's in charge, has to be in charge, because the client will not change unless the client is ready to change. And if you uh, have ever uh, watched the movie uh, Good Will Hunting? Uh, that's one of the, thing, the things that is happening between Will and Sean uh, is the fact that uh, Sean can't really help Will until Will is willing to accept him. And that's why they sit there and don't say anything for the first several sessions. Problem exploration. What is the extent of your problem? How is the problem affecting your life? How long has this problem been in existence? How frequently does this problem happen and how bad does it get? What is the cause of your problem? Are you living in an environment that will allow the problem to return? Is the problem worse because you haven't dealt with it? Is this a superficial problem or one that gets, goes deeper requiring extensive therapy? How urgent is it that the problem be solved? Is it possible that this problem is the symptom of a more serious problem? Considerations of any problem include financial remuneration. Can they afford therapy? The client time constraints. Can they afford therapy time-wise? Practitioner time constraints. How much time do you have to spend with this client? Dealing with a crisis. The practitioner might have to act without fully exploring all problems due to crisis status. So if it is a crisis, you need to, you need to jump right in so that you can uh, keep them from, from having a... Uh, a breakdown. The immediate crisis situation will have to be dealt with first before you can address any other problems. The practitioner may have to be more directive because of the crisis. Crisis situations dealing with interpersonal violence would include murder. Crisis situations dealing with interpersonal violence would include rape. It would also include terrorist bombings and natural disasters, such as floods. Uh, major natural disasters would include tornadoes. Uh, this is a picture of, uh, in Oklahoma, actually. Crisis situations dealing with major uh, natural disasters would include fires. They would include hurricanes, which you guys don't have to worry about, but people on the East Coast definitely, definitely do. Crisis situations dealing with personal loss would include unexpected death of a family member. It would include sudden abandonment of a significant other. 
It is important to stay calm and remember that safety is the first priority. Use skills of listening, asking questions for clarification, express empathy and warmth. Seek supervision as soon as possible. The pre-contemplation stage, clients do not see any need to make a change. They do not see their behaviors or feelings as a problem. Uh, they blame others for the problem. Uh, moving from something clients cannot change to something they can improves efficacy. Empathy about problems that are out of client's control is necessary. If the client states that her boss is unfair to her, the practitioner might see her part of the problem as her inability to figure out what she can do to be treated more fairly. The practitioner isn't denying that the client has a problem, merely pointing out the portion of the problem that the client can control. If the client states that the problem is the city's failure to, in, to adequately maintain their, neighbor, their neighborhood, the practitioner might help the client to see that they're part of the problem as their lack of information about how to effectively lobby for services. If a mother is upset because her son is doing poorly in school and wants to make him bring up his grades, the practitioner will accept this as a valid concern and work with the mother to figure out what she wants to change about herself. The mother may be focusing too much on what the child is not doing or may not have encouraged him. She may not have discussed the problem with his teachers. If the client is a young single mother of three children who states that she doesn't have enough money for food and the house and housing, even though she works full time, the practitioner can work with her on her desire for more income so that she can better provide for her family and can tell her about whatever additional resources might be available to help her provide for her family. Motivational interviewing can be very helpful. Uh, motivational interviewing is client-centered counseling that helps clients increase motivation by assisting them in exploring and resolving ambivalence about making changes. Uh, mystic. Rolling with resistance, uh, clients have valid insights and ideas about their situation. Arguments for change are avoided by clients. The practitioner indicates a willingness to work on the problem identified by the client. Resistance often arises when the client is required to see, to see the practitioner. A motivational interviewing strategy that involves pointing out an incongruity between the client's present behavior and something they value or want. This may increase client's motivation to change. The goal is to move the client to contemplating that there is a problem that they can work on. <laughs> Identifying discrepancies. There is a readiness to believe there is a problem. Oh, we're in the contemplation stage. Good. There is a readiness to believe there is a problem. The client can acknowledge the advantages of changing, but is also aware of the costs. They need to express empathy. You need to express empathy. It's important at all stages of change that you express empathy with the client. This provides acceptance. Contemplation stage, I know that you know that your drinking is a problem, but right now stopping seems impossible. I understand that you think it would improve your health if you gave up smoking, but that giving up smoking feels almost impossible. Advanced reflecting, the client's perspective is essential. Identifying values, meanings, meanings feelings, and ex expectations. Expressions need to be stated tentatively. The purpose is to invite the client to have insight, self-awareness, and or a deeper understanding of his or her situation. It seems like you feel angry because the, the uh, this is advanced reflecting. It seems like you feel angry because the value communication, you value communication and he doesn't. 
you have moved from focusing on the client's husband to identifying what the client values. It sounds like you feel angry because you expect clear directions from your boss. Without clear directions, you feel afraid of making mistakes. You've moved from focusing on the boss to focusing on the client's need for clarification. It seems like you value open communication and haven't found a way to invite other members of the group to share openly. Moving from focusing on the client to think, yeah, moving from focusing on what the client thinks is wrong with the other group members to focusing on what the client values. I hear that you were frustrated and think this group isn't accomplishing enough. It seems like you really want this task group to do well. Moving from focusing on what the client is frustrated about and what the client wants. It seems that several folks in this agency are feeling impatient because the needs of the growing Hispanic population are not being adequately addressed by the agency. It sounds like addressing the needs of the Hispanic population is something many of you value and think is important. You're moving from focusing on what is wrong with the services at the agency to what the people in the agency value. I'm wondering if you feel like you aren't getting much recognition at work. Being valued for your contribution seems to be important to your job satisfaction. Moving from what the people at work aren't giving the client to what the client wants. I feel the feeling that the I have the feeling that the group really wants to deal with this issue, but you are afraid of hurting one another's feelings, moving from what the group members are afraid of to what they want. It seems like you folks in the neighborhood really want to get this problem solved, but are feeling pretty discouraged right now because the process seems difficult, moving from how hard the process is to what the people want. Themes may be related to interacting, behaving, thinking, and or feelings. Seeing patterns can help clients to make changes. A theme is an idea or point of view shared by several people. A pattern refers to consistent ways of thinking, feeling, or behaving. <laughs> Identifying patterns and themes. A pattern might be related to how a client tries to escape, run away, or use some self-defeating behavior. A practitioner can ask about the possible connections between problems and thoughts, feelings, ways of coping, and other situations. It is particularly powerful to relate themes and patterns to clients' experience of what is happening in his her relationship with the practitioner. Partializing, uh, clients can begin to identify their roles and problems and begin to set goals. It is important to state and restate goals until both client and practitioner are clear about them. Partializing involves breaking a complex problem into manageable parts. Partializing, the practitioner and client can decide what part of the problem should be dealt with first. This may be the easiest, the most painful, or one that can lead to the solvability of other aspects of the larger problem. It is important to remember that the client's perception of what is manageable may be smaller than or different than the, the practitioner might see as possible. Supporting self-efficacy. Encouragement given to clients that you can solve problems. That they can solve problems, sorry. <laughs> The goal is to enhance clients' confidence and capability to cope. Statements that recognize what the clients have already accomplished and identifies their strengths can support their belief in themselves. Problem identification. Concerns aiding the clients identifying problems clearly. Oh, I see. Problem identification concerns aiding the clients. Okay. In larger systems and families, different uh, members may understand problems differently. 
and this is this is very true. I, the reality is that uh, two people looking at the same thing will see two different things. They'll see it from each other, from their own perspective, and the probability that that perspective is similar is not very good. So if you've got a mother and a father, and they're both looking at a problem in the family, the probability that they see the problem uh, in a similar manner is not very high. Clients often think of problems as something to stop. They need to change to what they want to start doing instead of stopping a, uh, an activity. What they need to start doing. Ethical considerations in problem identification. Uh, practitioners need to support essential ethical principles related to autonomy and self-determination. Now we live and uh, we live in a collect uh, in a individualistic society and that's one of the reasons why autonomy and self-determination are so important. Now uh, the uh, uh, Navajo Nation being more collectivistic, uh, you might want to temper the, the autonomy and the self-determination just a little bit. But it really all depends on the client. Is the client the kind of individual that uh, is more collectivistic or are they more individualistic? If they're more individualistic, then autonomy and self-determination is very positive. Client decisions are influenced by culture, gender, age, and other factors. The practitioner's role is to support choices of clients, even if they feel they should make other choices. And that is the end of chapter 12. So let's go, let's go ahead to chapter 13. Establishing goals. Uh, sorry, I just got back from the gym. Your name right there. <laughs> Identifying general goals. Goals set the direction of work to be done. Clear goals are necessary in planning steps to be taken. They are what clients hope to achieve working with the practitioner. They are the client's vision of what life would be like if their problems were solved. Goals must be mutually established between practitioners and clients. Practitioners should not try to guide clients. This is the job of the client, creating their goals. Satisfactory work depends on practitioners' ability to collaborate with the client. Questions that seek clarification help clients figure out what goals they are motivated to achieve. Exception finding questions are useful. Explore times when the problem was not present. Times when the problem was smaller or less problematic. Open-ended questions. At the end of our work together, what do you want your life to be like? Now we're trying to set goals. When the problems that brought you here are solved, what do you want to be thinking, doing, or feeling? When we have finished our work together, what might other people see you doing that you aren't doing now? Tell me about the picture of what you want your family to be like. Popcorn, that's what I want my family to be like. Oh, look at all the redheads. That's interesting. Let's pretend that these problems are solved. What differences will uh, you notice in your life? What does that say? Wait a minute. Life is not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance even when it rains. Who can argue with that? Identifying measurable, attainable, positive, and specific goals. Uh, the MAPS program. Uh, this is just one way of setting goals, okay? Um, I'm not saying that this is the only way to set goals. It's just a way that that uh, your your authors have determined uh, can potentially work. Make it possible for clients and practitioners to evaluate changes that have been made. It provides a clear direction and focus for work. Will you give me an example of what positive communication sounds like to you? 
When you have positive communication, what will you be doing that you weren't doing aren't weren't doing now? In what situations do you want to have more positive communication? I want to get better grades, so I will write down each assignment I get this week. That's a goal. I want to lose weight, so I will go to the gym three times this week. Another goal. I want to be uh, become sober, so I will attend one AA meeting this week. I want more friends, so I will sit next to two different people in each of my classes. A goal needs to be something that the client believes is possible based on available resources such as time, money, and, the, and people power. Establishing a series of small goals helps clients experience success. It is important that the size of the goal seems attainable to a client and reasonable to the practitioner. Attainable goals. Unattainable goals involve changing another person. Time to reach the goal must be relatively proximate to the decision to change. Clients who participate in getting go uh, setting goals are more likely to believe goals are achievable. Goals should be visualized in concrete, specific behavioral terms. Your goal is to lose 15 pounds. Would it be reasonable to lose one and a half pounds this week? Your goal is to turn your homework in on time. Would it be reasonable to set aside, excuse me, an hour, an evening to do homework for this class? Your goal is to attend AA meetings. Would it be reasonable to acquire a list of local meetings this week? I hear that you want to weigh what you weighed when you were 30 years old. Let's consider first setting a goal that you can successfully reach in a shorter period of time. What do you think would be a reasonable and not too hard goal to reach in two months? I agree that giving up drinking and going to AA meetings every day is a terrific goal. AA is very good at celebrating <clears throat> each milestone in the process of lifetime sobriety. How about if one of your first goals is going to AA every day for two weeks? Does that sound okay to you? It sounds like your group was disappointed in their grade, in your grade, on the big project, and you were determined to start earlier in the next big project. That sounds like a plan that will work. The next project is due six weeks from now. What goal would you like to achieve three weeks from now? related to that project. So the two of you often argue about how to discipline the children and think it would be better if you agreed on discipline methods. That sounds like a good goal to achieve. Since you disagree on many aspects of discipline, would it make sense to you to start with the goal of coming to an agreement about what to do when Anne won't uh, spend time on her homework? In this town, you have many people who are homeless and you want to develop a solution to the problem that will be acceptable to the city council and also to the people who are homeless. I wonder if the first goal might be creating a group of people, including some people who are homeless and some of you who are willing to work on this problem. Positive goals keeps the focus on what the client wants to do rather than what the client doesn't want to do. Practitioners can use open-ended questions to help clients to think in positive terms. I want to lose weight, so today I will eat at least two servings of fruit. I want to turn my homework in on time, so today I will review all the work I need to turn in this week. I want to make two new friends, so today I will say hi to five people. If one night at dinner you weren't fighting, what do you think you might be doing? 
If one day you felt the urge to drink but didn't drink, what would you do instead? What is your vision of what the neighborhood would be like without drug dealers? When you are concerned about how things are going in the group, how would you like to talk to each other about your concerns or hopes? <coughs> if this agency was functioning in a way that you believe would be effective, what would people be doing that they aren't doing now? Short-term goal, this week I will go to class and write down my homework assignments. Squidward. Long-term goal, this semester I will raise my grades one level. Short-term goal, this week I will speak with three new people. Long-term goal, this semester I will make two new friends. Moving from general to specific goals, practitioners may decide to, to approach agreement on problems and goals differently. Some practitioners prefer more general goals. Working on one goal often relates to other goals. Many practitioners find it helpful to establish a written or verbal agreement that describes previous understandings between them and the client. These agreements are developed collaboratively and can be modified as necessary. A good alliance involves a safe, trusting, comfortable, collaborative relationship. It includes an, an agreement between the practitioner and client about the goals. The, these set the stage for monitoring work together. There are many valid and reliable scales for measuring the alliance. There are also scales for measuring the outcome of a session or series of sessions with clients. The goal attainment scale is a five point scale that ranges from most to least favorite, uh, favorable outcomes that clients believe are possible. It can be used to identify the level of progress and achieved uh, either during the course of the work, together, or at the end. Using, using the GAS for, for each MAPS goal can be helpful. This week I will eat two servings of fruit each day. Wait a minute, we've done that. Next week I will make an appointment to join a gym. The following week I will attend the gym and three exercise classes. The next week I will continue at the gym and eating fruit and weigh myself to see if I have lost any weight. If not, I will join Weight Watchers, uh, etc. And that is the end of the chapter. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next week. Don't forget to get your histories in. Um, don't uh, the uh, the problem that that uh, your your character uh, has uh, has to be something that has ne you've never ha had a problem with. Um, I've already explained to you that uh, if you choose a uh, a problem that you have potentially suffered from in the past or that you're too close to, uh, it may cause a relapse. And we certainly don't want that to happen. Okay, I'll talk to you next week.